big one. It's a big one. He's a fighter. It's got some power to it. Oh yeah, this boat flies when you don't want it to. This is what your bass would have ate for bait. Let's be real. I can't believe that just happened. I caught my lunker. I watched him swim up to it and like look at it. Let's talk about this whole setup in case anybody is interested. That's actually not what I was expecting at all. Hey everyone, welcome to today's Gill Forest Twins episode. Amanda, what are we doing today? Today we are gonna be doing some freshwater fishing in some of the local lakes of South Florida, which is where we are. We've already dumped the boat at the ramp, we've got our rods, and we are ready to start fishing. I think specifically today, we're looking for largemouth bass. Yes. But not 100% sure, South Florida is full of peacock bass where we normally fish. We have quite a few non-native species in our local lake systems. Yes. So, and we're frequently yeah. always catching peacock Peacocks, but today we really yeah. want to land those largemouths. Could be totally wrong, it could be an entire peacock bass day because this is our first time fishing this lake, so we're gonna see what freshwater species live, live in, in this area. Yes, live in this specific lake. My name's Amanda. My name is Emily, and welcome to our channel, Gale Forest Twins. This video is brought to you by Penn Fishing. have been following along you know we recently got a trolling motor and today is our first day using our trolling motor in fresh water so we've used it in salt water but this is a freshwater first which i know is pretty important for bass fishing because guys th that motor back there it's still humming it's a 115 yep and it's got some power to it oh yeah this boat flies when you don't want it to yeah <laughs> when you're just trying to creep up to the you edge. put this boat in gear and it's it's moving it's going Oops. you're so, gonna crash yeah we don't want to spook all the fish we're trying to use the trolling motor today yeah so let's take that trolling motor we see a little um dam? it's not a dam <laughs> it's like a something a industrial barrier a barrier that we are gonna go try and see if there's fish there I know. It's good for like a Texas rig. Yeah. I don't know if it was a bass, but there is something. It's a gar. Oh. That's what I saw. Whoa. It's massive. It's a huge bass. Where? Right here. It's like a freaking six pounder. No way. I'm not even kidding. Okay, where? Just went under the boat. Okay, we gotta stay in this area. And I believe fish on. We have a fish. It's a peacock bass. That's actually not what I was expecting at all. Okay guys, so what happened here is Emily, how big did you say you thought that bass was? At least a six pounder, like massive. And it was a large mouth. A big massive so large mouth. So Emily claims she saw like, cl you claims. know, you saw like a six pounder. Yes. So I shamelessly broke out the shiners because <laughs> I really wanted to catch that six pounder. We're using some artificials. We're, we do have some flukes out and we caught a peacock bass. So we did catch a peacock bass, kind of surprised. No large mouth yet, but it's the first but fish I of the day. And we saw one. the huge large mouth, so we're gonna try to catch that guy. But we got the skunk off the boat. And we got the cute little peacock bass. We are releasing, releasing. our little peacock bass. Oh, oh, he's kicking. He's so away. away. Cute little guy, nice fish. Now guys, Emily, where you saw that six pounder there's actually like a rock wall back there here. is a rock wall so i think i'm going to drop another shiner back there but you need to catch something on the artificial i know i'm working on it all right Alrighty, i'm rigging my next shiner here we go and back here is where i was saying there's this rock wall so i don't know if you guys can see it i can already see some cichlids and i have seen a lot of peacock bass in here so i don't know if we will even get to the large mouse because of how many peacocks I see. But I'm just gonna try to get that guy down to the bottom. Hopefully a big guy eats him before one of these little guys that I do see swimming around here. But there's a lot of structure back here. I have a cichlid staring at my, no, I don't want this. I don't want the cichlid. 
Come on, go away. Oh man, I might have just caught a cichlid. Maybe not. Hold on. Nope, we did not. All right. All right, buddy, you can do it. Let's just get him to swim down. Maybe I'll have him swim down a little bit away from the rock wall because the larger fish, I would imagine, would stay further away from the structure, whereas the little guys are definitely going to want to be over there. Although he's just swimming. Come on. Go down. There we go. I'm just going to let him go down to the bottom right here in this unprotected area and see if we can catch one. All right, I got a bite. Do I think it's the big guy? I don't know. Oh, no, my bait was just nervous. All right, let's try that again. That's a large mouth right there. Oh, oh, I'm on. It's a big one. It's a big one. It's, I don't think it's, I don't know if it's the big one. It is a nice, it's a large mouth. It's a large mouth. Heck yes. Okay. Oh my goodness. Oh <laughs> my God. Oh, he's jumping. Okay. He's a fighter. We've got our largemouth bass, targeted species. This is one of those days where we might need to get a net next time. Cause we all right, don't all right. have I got one. you, Amanda. I got so you. Just one quick swing. Ready? One, two. Woo! In Ooh! the first catch. All right, come, come grab this guy, Amanda. Emily, I must wow. ask. Are you sure this wasn't the six pounder that you saw? I mean, I want to say no, there's got to be bigger ones in there. I but saw this, this guy is, swimming by the rocks and nice just one. dropped my shiner straight in front of him. Amazing catch, guys. We found a largemouth bass in this lake. Does it mean that there are more largemouths than peacock Abs bass? Oh, we don't know. Probably not. But I'm just so excited. New species for a new lake for this situation. Yes. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's first new first day. largemouth of the day. First time fishing this lake system. I mean, beautiful, beautiful species. Let's get this guy in the water quickly. Releasing our not beautiful. quite six pounder. But what I would love to do with this guy, well, not with this guy, what I think we need to do moving forwards is probably get a scale for the boat so that we can weigh these guys. I mean, we have a scale. We just need to bring it next time. There we go. He's waking up a little bit. Beautiful fish. You gonna go, buddy? And the key is to wait for him to swim away. Keep his head under the water and wait for him to swim away. Did you just catch a fish? This is, this is hilarious. Well, you guys are gonna, this is, <laughs> this. <laughs> this is funny. And this is what your bass would have ate for bait. Let's be real. Yeah, probably. Guys, is this thing not adorable? It's the cutest. It's so cute. Look how little it is. He's so oh my cute. goodness. All right, let's send him home. I got my first fish of the day, and I'm gonna be proud of this little guy because this but little it's a guy. Large mouth. It is a large mouth. I got a large mouth. All right, go ahead and let's just give this guy a release. But right, that is something we've been learning about this spot is there are definitely some large mouths here. So I think we're two large mouths and one peacock bass, I believe. And we've seen some gar, but Emily's just gonna go ahead and release the cutie patootie. There goes the little guy. Now that I caught my first fish, he might have been a little guy, but he counts, guys, he counts. Let's talk about this whole setup in case anybody is interested. So we'll start with the rod. This is the bass thumb rod, the gill force rod. It's basically our all-purpose bass fishing, freshwater lake fishing rod. Eight to 14 pounds, fast action. Okay, look at the color, you see the red? So we paired it with this Penn Fierce 2500 reel. A big attraction to this reel, I'll be honest, was the color, wow. But we use Penn for all of our rods and reels, or all of our rods, yes, all of our reels are pen for all of our rods. So yes, we love pen and pen is our go-to reel. I think you would say rods. we picked the fierce reel. I picked reel the fierce specifically, specifically because for the color. Of the color. I picked pen because we are big fans of pen. And if you guys watch any of our videos, you'll see that we pretty much always fish with pen. We have 20 pound braid spooled on this reel. And a little fun fact, I might have to have a picture pop up for you guys so you can see it better. But if you take a look, the reel will guide you with what braid or mono to put on it. So if you're not sure what to spool your reel with, literally, you just gotta read it and it'll tell you what to do. From the braid, we have our fluorocarbon leader. Now I have 15 pound, you can do 12 to 15 and only two to three feet of it, nothing crazy for bass fishing. However, if we were yellowtail snapper fishing, we would probably have like 10 feet of fluoro on. And then because we just fished with a shiner, there was just a shiner on here. This is. I threw the box out. It was either a 1-0 or 2-0 size circle hook, but just a nice small little circle hook so that way we're not gut hooking our fish. If you guys want this awesome Pen Fierce 2500 reel, link will be in the description box. I'm on. 
I just got a bite. I got a bite. I got a bite. I can't believe that just happened. Check this out, you guys. He may be a little guy, but you're not going to believe what just happened. Let me unhook him and I'll show you guys just a second. We decided to change it up and I said, Amanda, why don't you just drive along the bank here? And I casted out this little diving bait. Let me show you guys. Looks like a shad, right? This little diving bait. And I basically trolled it. And I was like, let's see if any bass are gonna come and eat. And this little guy ate a lure, an artificial, literally, what? A third the size, the length of him? One third the length of him. That's what Half he just ate. his size. He is a little feisty guy. That was cool. I think we should try that again. And we'll show you I do too, so it. let's keep doing that. Right. But yep, there we go. Little bass. So let's release the little bass on the troll, which we actually have done before. We learned this trolling for bass technique in Disney when yes. we used to fish the Magic Kingdom, or not used to, we still do. When we fish the Magic Kingdom Lake system in Disney with the Disney fishing experience, every once in a while they'll troll the pontoon boat. Kona is all excited. She wants to see the bass because she knows he's in the water. All right, little guy, wakey, wakey. There, there he goes. goes. All right, so let's just right, show everybody right. what we've been doing. Ready, Amanda? Let's yes. Do this. So Amanda is here driving in, uh, just basically just forwards. Just, just in, in gear. gear, in forwards. If anything, she's bumping it out of gear because we're going pretty fast. So yeah, if anything, she bumps it out of gear because this boat we talked about earlier, it kind of flies. So I'm going to choose to be on the side by the bank, cast it out, and literally st stand here. Uh oh, hold on, Amanda, we're, we're in some weeds. Okay, got to watch for the weeds. That's the only bad thing, or the grass. I shouldn't say weeds. I'm used to salt water, guys. I'm gonna be it's definitely not easy transitioning. Okay, so I'm holding the rod tip nice and high. I got my lure back a decent ways, so that way it's not right in the prop watch. And Amanda, we're going kind of fast. Let me drop it back into idle. All right, so now we're gonna slow down. And we just wanna have constant pressure. You, you never want your, your rapala or your diving bait to pop up back in gear. There we go. We got like a sixth sense going. She knows, I know what we want it to feel like and look like. So we don't want to get too close, because if we're too close, then we're going to get all grassed up. And we want to be a little bit deeper, but still on the edge. Hopefully we can get one uh, right now on camera for you guys. Oh, I'm on, I'm on. You're on? I'm on, oh, I'm on. It worked again, on the turn. <laughs> Wait, oh my god, this is amazing. Guys, this is incredible. All right, guys, he's a bluegill. At first glance, he was just so large and spiny. I saw something large and spiny and immediately went like, Mayan cichlid or a cichlid, something like that in my mind. And I saw something like, wait a minute, that's a bluegill. So guys, we just caught a bluegill on the diving bait, the diving artificial trolling, trolling. We caught a bluegill trolling. I don't know who else can say that. All right, ready to let this guy go? Yep, so say goodbye. If he was little, a little guy like this would be the perfect bait for some large mouse. You got a bite? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah! Oh my god! Amanda, it's a, it's a big one. Hold on though, you understand. Sure, we had attracted it trolling, but it missed it. And then it swam up to it, and then I like reeled it, and then it went for it, and then I set the hook. Like, it was amazing. God, that's amazing. That's so cool. All right. All right, I'm just gonna swing him. Yeah. Okay, let's get going. There's some the big trail. bass Holy in cow. here. Wow. I caught. My lunker, guys, is this not oh, like a boy. lunker of a bass? I, it is uh, amazing. Long and skinny, for sure. It is definitely kind of skinny, but long. And look at this eyeball. I know, Isn't it's very interesting. Cloudy. It's cloudy. You I must have some kind of maybe disease or something. Or parasite, I don't know. Uh, guys, if, anybody knows, if you know and you can tell, it, put in the comments. We'd basically, his eye is cloudy. Cloudy. So drop in the comments if you know what it is. We would love to know <laughs> and learn some more, and then we can share it with our future viewers. He's what? He's about to go. Okay. This thing is spicy. He's ready. There he goes. Oh my gosh. That was awesome, Amanda. Yes. What a cool catch. So I hit, I felt the bite, right? We're basically trolling the crankbait. And I was like, oh, I got bit. And then I watched him swim up to it and like look at it. And this was all within like a one second, split second frame, but it felt like a minute. And then I reeled on it and it was like, yeah. And then it ate it and it was it was there. So it, it was really cool. That was cool. Because he was like, he came, he looked, and then I put the little crank on it, and then he went for it. 
If anyone's curious, this is the crankbait that I we were just catching those last, what, three fish we just caught on. So this is a Berkeley crankbait. I have it in the packaging here, if anyone wants to see it. It's a slightly different color in the packaging, but it's for seven to 10 feet, slow rise. It's silent, which basically means that um, they make crankbaits that kind of like make rattling noises. This one doesn't. You guys can see the little lip on it. So that's what I just caught that nice little lunker on. Thanks for watching guys. We hope you had fun coming with us. We had success on the shiners. We had success trolling for largemouth bass in a new lake and water system. So it was fun for you so guys. So I guess the yes, question Amanda? is, would you say this is a peacock bass lake or a largemouth bass lake? I would say it's a largemouth bass 100%, lake. hundred percent. I mean, the peacock it's a large, we caught was this big it's and a, everything else was yes. largemouth. To me, it's a largemouth bluegill lake as yeah, opposed to a yeah. peacock cichlid lake. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. Cause we have some lakes that are primarily in the peacocks and more of like the non-native species like the cichlids and the peacocks. And then this water system here, it did have peak, does have peacocks in it, but it also had quite a bit large mouse. We hope you guys get out there, have fun, and stay safe.